Hey, guess what I'm doing? Yep, you guessed it. I'm reviewing more horror movies. This week, you already know we're doing the two babysitter movies. Uh, these are some of my favorite movies on Netflix. Granted, that isn't saying much because Netflix can't stop putting out shit on their platform. But uh, yeah, let's just hop into it. So if you don't know anything about these movies, basically this kid Cole has a babysitter that he has a huge thing for and as it turns out she's trying to make a deal with Satan by getting the blood of the innocent somehow and that blood ends up being Cole's. Oh and also these goobers are here too. Anywho, let's get into the first movie shall we? These movies are a cringe fest of gory hilarity and quite frankly that's exactly why I love them. I really like funny, cringe, hard to swallow comedy and this movie is chocked full of it being shown off by amazing camera work that looks very clear and sharp. There's also a lot of foreshadowing in this movie and it pays off near the end, which makes the movie feel really fun and rewarding. That's the word I'd use to describe these movies, fun. I had an absolute blast watching this movie. But one of the bad things about it is how Cole just stops and talks with the teenagers who are trying to kill him, which is really weird because don't get me wrong, it's, it's, it's funny as hell, but I just feel like Cole wouldn't have a whole damn, you know, have like a whole damn podcast episode with these insane Satanists who have already killed three people in front of him. Also, Cole is cracked. He kills everybody. I'm talking all of the Satanists, the nine times his size. It's kind of insane, actually, how this little kid managed to pull this off. And he is way too cool with it. I feel like this young kid would be extremely messed up by what he saw and what he had to do to protect himself. But he isn't. He's just, he's cool like a can of Coke straight out of the fridge. It's a little off-putting, but it's not that annoying. And like I said before, these kills are insanely creative. I mean, they set up a kill like 30 minutes before it happens, and it's fucking hilarious. And also, the comedy is perfectly blended with the horror elements. Never once did I feel like there was too much horror, which, I mean, I'm never gonna feel ever, but I, I never once felt like there it was too scary, or I never once felt like there were too many jokes. It's perfectly blended in there, and it, it's great. So this movie is like Home Alone, but like, um on crack all right let's go ahead and talk about the sequel and also before we start with the sequel this therapist funniest motherfucker on netflix not even cabin so the babysitter killer queen which is the sequel to the previous movie takes place two years after the first one and uh, cole is now a whole ass grown man i don't know how they thought they could sneak this past us but uh, i guess murder makes you grow i i don't know the growth spurt with cole is actually fucking ridiculous it's probably because uh this movie was filmed you know like four years after the first one so you know kids grow but my point is is that it's just kind of off-putting i don't really care but i'm just saying that just to say it unfortunately the dialogue somehow got a bit worse i don't know if it's due to a rushed production or what but this movie is pretty much the same uh it, it takes place in the middle of nowhere which is pretty much the only difference plus a couple of characters uh melanie is a character in the previous movie i didn't explain that i should have explained it but i didn't uh but anyway she's back and her acting is exponentially better and she's a bigger character now which is, you know, she's more important to the story. Oh, and also there's this new goofy ass retro vibe that I absolutely love. I mean, they kind of added like a kind of 80s vaporwave feel. It's hard to explain. You kind of have to go watch it to know what I'm talking about. In fact, that retro vibe is so apparent that they have this whole fight scene in the movie that's styled like an arcade fighting game. And oh my goodness, it is, it, it, it is, it is perfect. It is a masterpiece of filmmaking. This shit is hilarious. The fact that the crew actively had to go out and film this only increases my love for this movie it's great jenna ortega is added to the cast as well and she's here i mean her performance is good by default and her character is great and touching but it's just she's not that um she's not that memorable i didn't leave this movie feeling like wow she was really good she was just she was acceptable <laughs> also the score in this one makes the movie feel even better it's very dramatic and funny and anyways, these movies are so fucking funny and I love them with every fiber of my being and also I pray that a third movie gets made. So yeah, that was this week's episode. It's been Burnt. Catch you on the flip side.